The show is about to start. Thank you for your cooperation. Enjoy the show, and please come back and visit us again. Evening, it's Love Sport right here. Thank you to everyone who got involved with our Watford show. Absolutely manic. We want to hear from you this evening, though, on all things Wombles and what's been a brilliant week for AFC Wimbledon. Uh, a a season-defining week, I'd like to think. Back-to-back wins, a London derby, which was tense. Pure tension midweek. And, and I mean, a, a victory yesterday, which I think at half-time, no one actually, no one actually thought that Wimbledon will come back. Nick, you, you thought, all right, Nick, yeah, the eternal optimist. There is Stuart, no chance. He was crying into his pie, wasn't he? There he is. <laughs> yeah, I was a bit. I was a bit. Here he is. The gents that are in the building, it's uh, the good half of the Draper brothers. Thank you very much. Nick, although I do enjoy, you know, your brother now. He's, he's a good lad. You enjoy my brother? Well, I enjoy his company. All oh, right. He's a good lad now and then. Someone has to. And we've got uh, Stuart. In, in, back in the building, I saw you yesterday. You were sporting the shorts yesterday. It was nice and warm up. It, it was also. lovely weather, wasn't it? I, 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 I thought to myself, you know what? Fair, fair play to him. Sporting the shorts, very good. Poland's not really known for its nice weather, is it? So. So a, rare, a rare good day in Warsaw. I will say though, the seats are very tight at Warsaw, and I kept catching my legs against it because mm. there was so much to enjoy. On the second half, I don't think I, well, I don't think I sat down too much. Mm. To be fair, it was um, a great second half. That's what away days are made for, aren't they? They are. Talk to me about it. Um, well, I wasn't there, so you're going to have to talk to you about it. But what I would say is, is that I was quite happily sat following the updates, calm as anything, 100% certain we were going to come back into this game, and I was pretty right. Because at half-time, half-time it was possibly, oh, I can only liken it to Gillingham. Do you remember when we stayed up in League 2 on the last day? Yep. And our yep. last away game was away at Gillingham, and we were 2-0 down at half-time. And in the away end at Priestfield, there were just open tears. People were openly crying, floods of tears. And that's what it was like following the action online yesterday because everyone was in a state of pure depression and anger and vitriol to be honest with you with the fact we were tuning down to Warsaw sometimes you just got to chill calm yourself I, I switched my radio off about quarter to five and it was 2-2 two, two. and I thought right a point will do and, and I got out of my car and I thought a point will do you know what I'd have to do and um, it was only I, I, I was watching Fulham Brentford yesterday, so I'm watching the Fulham game. I've come out and we, we've gone for a drink after the game, and someone goes, Hey, Aaron, at least uh, Wimbledon won. I said, Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> they, they won? <laughs> you know, and, and it, it was the old it was the old fashioned, you know, the look away now thing, you know, that they do on the news because that was what it was. I just didn't look, and, and I was shocked. And, and I mean, you've where do we start with credit? Who do we credit this performance to? Who do we credit the fight back to? Because look, Neil Ardley is at his critics. Yeah, you know we've talked about his persona and how he's quiet and he's just sort of he is the man in the corner of the room at a pub. But he is he 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 must have done something yesterday, or was it one of the players? Where are we? Who are we crediting to, uh, crediting this to? No, Joe, you know I think he's. Um... New has has gone, gone for it yesterday. He put two up. So we played two up on, on Tuesday. We played Piggott and uh, Lyle, Lyle Taylor. Played um, James Forrester. Sorry, Forrester and, and Dean Parrott. So we played with pretty four or five attacking players. Did the same Walsall. Um, and second half, whatever was said at half time, I would love to be a fly on the wall. But um, we we literally, Harry Fuller was playing as a right winger. He didn't put set a foot in his own half. And, and really, we just battled so hard. And Walsall in the end just had no... If I was a Walsall fan, I'd be very, very worried how they crumbled. But Wimbledon were excellent yesterday afternoon. And um, it wasn't... You know, the 3-2 win was very much justified. It was a, def- a, a defining game. I think the players finally realised what what you've got to do to win a game. You know, you've got to, It's a pressure environment. At half-time, everyone around us was winning. The results were terrible at half-time. So um, I said on our Facebook on half-time that you've got to go for it now because the results are not going for you. You've got to work hard. You've got to chuck balls into the box. We played long ball like anything. Like the second goal was a long ball goal, a lovely old. You know, we got Dave Besson later on. I saw it. I saw. I saw a long ball. The punt man fell from long, but you got to give LTB credit. Oh, you know, finish. What a finish! Outstanding finish. First time as well. Brilliant. Hmm. It was great finish, and um, that's after we missed the penalty as well. You know, but one thing I would say: please, 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 don't put Lard on penalties. He's not great. Uh, no, I remember mean, uh, it's a bit of a lucky one yesterday, wasn't it? Well, I've been doing my research here, as you know. And we've had six penalties, well, Lars had six penalties this season. And he scored three of them. All right, he's missed three. But it's not, ter- it's not terrible. 50%. 50%, exactly. Yeah. You win 50% of your games, you stay up easy, aren't you? And one of them, he was distraught of missing, wasn't he? Because he was a home to well, them. Yeah. Um, he 
it was just short on that one. Let's have a look at what's going on on socials. At Wicker Boat has tweeted out saying, watching the highlights, it looks like Long and LTB have been practicing the old Route 1 technique. It worked well for us in the past. Only opponents can play Long. May it continue? I agree with him there. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one, though, because normally when I associate long balls of Wimbledon days past, it would be a long ball up to a John Fashion or someone who'd get the flick, and then the other striker would be onto it. This was just... This, there was no flick. It was just straight through. Um, and it's rare that we get in behind teams so easily. I mean, do you think the players were just so... Rel- was there an element of relief from some of the players that they actually had the, sh- the shackles taken off them for that second half? And basically, Neil Hardley said to them, all right, the word was super brave afterwards, wasn't it? But it's more a case of just go out there and just attack and play with freedom. And they clearly, yeah. they've got to enjoy that, surely. Yeah, I think it was. I think the thing was that Dean Barrett on his interview yesterday did say that it wasn't good enough in the first half, and it wasn't. Also, wanted the game so much more than we did. They play higher up the pitch, one second balls. They, it was like Charlton didn't... I, you know, I said it, it, it was like Charlton didn't happen. The only thing we did well against Charlton, we did poorly against Walsall. But it showed, you know, the will to win, it showed... In the end, when it come to push come to shove, we were mentally stronger. We boxed them in. We scored the goals when we needed to. Um, and we had players that stood up and, and were counted. You know, Andy Barcher has been on the bench for a little while, come off the bench, put a great performance in. Lyle, Lyle was walking wounded. Well, Lyle couldn't walk after the game, but he just puts everything... I think Lyle typifies everything you need in a relegation battle. And as he said last week, you know, relegation is not going to happen on his, on his watch. And I think there's a few players out there that also felt that. Yeah, like Dean Parrott, for instance. And we shouldn't probably forget that Dean Parrott was actually on his way out of the club this season. Yeah. But a lot of people, myself included, would look at his return to the starting lineup as key in getting us over the line this season. I agree. I agree. If, um, I hope now... I hope Dino's... I've, I've felt in the recent weeks that Dino's been playing for a contract elsewhere because I think he was... I think he has... Is he shop windowing? You know, some players just put forms in, don't they? And you wonder whether actually not through your own manager, it's for someone else. Um, I hope we can... You, know, you must be able to find a role for Dean Parrott um, because the, the guy is a very... You know, with the ball, he's just as quick with the ball without it. Very much attacking. Yes, needs to work on his defensive side of it. But sometimes, he proves sometimes, yeah, defensive, foot, defensive football's great, but be on the front foot. And I think we've mm-hmm. been on the front foot for the last three games. And we've got seven points out of nine, which, you know, I was here, I was here last week and I didn't think that was going to happen nowhere near that. 10 past 8, Love Sport Radio. We want to hear from you this evening. It's 0208 70 20 558 at Love Sport Radio on Twitter. Love Sport 558 AM. Lads, talk to me about the London derby on Tuesday. It, I heard the atmosphere was quite tense. Great atmosphere, great atmosphere. And um, and Charlton Char played really well. I don't think we hit a Charlton team that were, were off form. I think we... And yeah, the atmosphere was intimidating, um, but I think we got the goals at the right time. Uh, obviously, an error by their centre half for the goal, which Lowe, you know, done very well with. But we we fought for every ball. It was a yeah, it was, it was a typical London derby, a great London derby. And atmosphere wise, it all comes back to I know I said this all season, I banned this trouble season. Expectation. We were talked about being told we need to be more positive, and it's such a negative atmosphere. I don't think we've been negative at games at all. I think we've been quiet, perhaps, so but I don't think necessarily negative. Charlton and Scunthorpe, it was up because there was no expectation we were going to get results. It was not a Strosby at home on the on the first home game, but it wasn't Fleetwood at home where we're going in there expecting to be the better team or expecting a result. We weren't expecting it, and the crowds will always, always, always create more noise when you're the underdog. Funny you say that, Nick, because we've had a tweet in from Dave Abbott at Ratty75. Nice one, Dave. He's <laughs> tweeted out last week already saying, if we survive, will this recent run be seen as enjoyable? It's stressful on a roller coaster, but survival will make it memorable. He's got a point. Hey, look, the last three games have been amazing, but it does, it disappoints me because we've got to the 42nd game to really get on and get amongst teams. Um, I, hey, look, we, we, I think, I think I've, I've put an echo line here. I think we've done enough to stay up now. I really do. I think for us to now get in trouble, we've got to do something seriously bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, is it is it not more of a feeling of relief than, than joy and happiness and what have you? Because I, 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 you look back on this season, and we're never going to look back on it fondly. No. We could finish this season very strongly. We could we could get three points at Doncaster. We could be old, and we could be we could. Um, but I'm not going to remember. We could even end up with more points than last season. I think we ended up on, but. Yeah. You're not going to think that was a great season or we've improved or anything like that. It's been Does horrendous. Does it prove how difficult this season and League One has been this year? I think it probably proves how, how defensive we've been. I think it's shown now when when the, you know, when we had to really put a performance in, um, Neil Hardy, admittedly, Neil Hardy doesn't play two forwards up front. I can't remember the last time he played two forwards up front away from home. So I think 
I think we've gone attacking and I think we've shown now that actually we're better going forward than we are trying to keep games tight. Nothing wrong in going for games. You know, I never have a problem if we come away from a game losing 3-1 or 2-1 if we've gone for the game. But I think the last three games have shown that we played two forwards up front and it shows actually that Lyle... You know, Lyle's been brilliant all season, but Lyle all of a sudden now is looking even more dangerous because he isn't the one person that two centre-halves are picking up. So we need to... We, I think we review the season when we stay up. I think we need to look at, you know, what. why did we only come alive in the last six games of the season? Why have we gone two up top and played Lyle Taylor more centrally when fans have been saying that since September, October time? And... Yeah, we've con- we don't want to go down this Ardley in, Ardley out stuff again. Very much still behind Neil Ardley. Still want him at the club. But he has to answer the question, why did it take so long to cotton onto this? It was almost like he was putting his, sticking his boot in all. It's, it's weird, isn't it? It's like I, a bloody I, I just feel that every time Wimbledon have looked to sort of build on something, they've just stalled constantly. Mm. It, it just... It's as if he's put sort of diesel into a petrol engine. <laughs> you know, it's a really weird one. I mean, look, two six-pointers in a week. Walsall, I'm, I'm at the Oldham game. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. It. The worst thing is I, I'm, nervous, I'm, I'm working for a Manchester-based radio station. I'm commentating on it from, from, a, <laughs> from an Oldham point of view, and it's Ooh. making me a little bit nervous because... I just, I'm desperate for that three points. I'm desperate for it just to be all sort of nice and papered over. And I'm desperate from the mob from MK to lose again so that we can consign them to League Two because um, it, it, I, I just really want three points. I'm des- I, I can't explain how much I want three points Wimbledon on, on Saturday. Just to win these two games or three games back to back, everything that's happened this season would would just be gone, in my own mind, from an outsider's point of view. I'll forget about the lot. Yeah, but it's, it's put to bed then, isn't it, basically? And we can all relax, which we haven't been able to do all season. I think that's the thing. We just want it over with now, to be honest with you, don't we? Yeah, I want it to be over with, but I want it to be, a, I hope in the summer, there's, well, not in the summer, actually, I hope as soon as the season finishes that we have a review and go, right, what did, what happened? Why did it mean, why do we have to get to the last six games? I know the budget table and that says, well, we will be 21st, so we technically could finish 19th, 18th, we finish well above where our target is but why is it only taking why have we only got going now and I hope we have a good review on the recruitment and if Neil does stay next season which I think is a big chance he will we have to recruit properly and um, give it a go this, it's interesting what you say Aaron I don't think this league is that tough I'll be honest with you I know it sounds silly but we've made a chart on a good chart on team look average but we've made look average because we've fought we've worked harder and the old women and team weren't the most one of the best skillfully, but they worked harder than you and that sometimes could be better than skill. It's amazing though because they got beaten yesterday. Yeah. They did as well. I don't know what's going on there. The wheels are falling. I really think let's let's sort of stray away from Wimbledon at the moment. You know, I know that they are neighbours and whatever you want to call them, rivals, whatever. I really think that Boyer should get the job there. Yeah. I think him and Johnny Jackson would do wonders for that club because I believe, like Wimbledon, Charlton, our Premier League club, you go to their ground, you look around, it's it's got the feel of a proper Premier League club, and you know I've I've got a soft spot for them. But I mean, plenty plenty of tweets coming in, plenty of tweets coming in. Um, I'm, I'm a bit lost. Zach Thompson, this is one for you actually, Nick, because I know you like a stat, you know you like a little bit of a fact. He says, correct me if I'm wrong, but was that the first comeback league victory since 2016? We never win when we go down first. It is away from home, because I think the last time away from home that we came from behind to win a game was Berry in the league, of course. I think we probably had Curzon Ashton, I'm trying to think of my dates now, 2016 as well, so that's yeah. probably the last time away from home, and that was 3-0 down. Um, it's January 2017 was the last time in the league we came from behind to win a game, and that was Oxford at home. Um, it's been pointed out to us that this is the season where previous records have been shattered. Mm. Never got a result against Bristol Rovers. We've done the double over them. Uh, Fleetwood had never been as easy as they beat us. We've never won at Wa- a Wimbledon team has never won in Poland at Warsaw, and yet we've gone and done it on Saturday. So it's the, it is when records get broken, and this season it's taken us until the forty-second game. Did you spot it. the ground on the M6? The, <laughs> you can't yeah. miss it, can you? When I was younger, I always pass every, every away game. Not every away game. Most away games mm. you pass it. I always want. I always want to go to Warsaw. Don't know why, it's obviously, you know. Well, if you look left, you can see Villa, though. So Yeah, yeah it's a bit of a smog over there, isn't it? <laughs> That's it. Um, Ray Armfield has tweeted in, nice one, Ray, he said, what approach will Neil take on Saturday? Super brave again or set up not to lose? Good question. It all depends for me. What well, Oldham have got a game in the week with Rochdale, and if they win that, I can imagine that us and Oldham will play out a nil-nil. And we'll just get up, get both teams up to 50 points and call it a day for the season, to be honest with you. Charles, interesting. I was looking at our head-to-head. 
And as you say, nil nil. Our, <laughs> our last three games, we've only played three games against Oldham, and every game has been nil nil. So not to disappoint you, Aaron, on Saturday, but I don't think we can uh, comment on many goals. It's all right. You're 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 buying the lagers off. The <laughs> uh, Chris <laughs> Hardy on Twitter. The fans have responded to the performances on the pitch. We're always behind the players. We just want to see them fight like they've done so well this week. I agree with his point, Chris. The problem is, or I guess the problem. I don't know if it's a problem. We've never seen this situation with Wimbledon before, where since 2002, it's just been the only way is up. Mm. You know, it's like that record's on repeat, the only way is up, baby. <laughs> you know, having a relegation battle, having to actually find your feet in a league, rather than completely go for it or, or settle in, you know, nicely, this is a point where you're going to experience some turbulence, aren't you? We yeah. have. <laughs> we, we have. Um we did have the season where we had to stay for the last day, of course, and we went through that. Um, I think it all comes down to th- this week what we've seen is a team that's been playing at a really high tempo, isn't it? And I think that's possibly the difference. Charlton, I don't think we particularly approached that game much differently to many games this season where our objective has been to stop the opposition from playing before we worry about our own game. Um, we just did it at a much higher tempo and pushed a little bit, high, pressed higher on the pitch, didn't we, against Charlton? That was only the main difference. Yeah, Charlton was a hard game. They're a decent team. They've got yeah. some decent players. And mm. I, I agree with no, you. No, no, yeah. You know, but one thing we didn't do, we, we bullied them. We didn't allow them to play. You know, we were lucky in a way. I say lucky. We were, we were not going to end off with an injury. But Darius Charles come on, which you can't ask for more than that in a sub. And we bullied Charlton's forwards. And there was a psycho. Is that Seiko? Is it Seiko? I can't remember his guy's name now. Is he big forward up front? I'll there's, find out for There's it. a few of them there. We, we bullied them. We didn't really allow them to play. But that's what you want us. You know, part of the old see. Wimbledon spirit. We want to see teams come off and be knocked off the pitch. And I guess that's why someone like Robbo, in his pomp, was effective. He did that. And, and people loved him for it. Because he's, let's be fair, he's a bit rough around the edges, Robbo, you know. And it comes it comes back to almost the philosophical way that Neil Ardy approached the season and wanting to change our style of football, the way we go about things, make us more attractive. And perhaps lose a bit of that Wimbledon DNA, almost. In the way we go about things. 20 past eight, Love Sport Radio, 0208 70 20 558, at Love Sport Radio on Twitter. We'll be reading more of your tweets out next. Plus, we'll be speaking to Dave Besant. <laughs> Love you to bits here. We do you wombles on Twitter. Thank you very much to everyone who's got in touch. Let's read out some more of your tweets. At Stevie Don has tweeted us. I love Sport Radio saying, sounding great, fellas. We're on target for our best ever season. We've been punching for two seasons now. What, 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 do, you, what do you say to that? Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, w- I would agree with that. And overall, we have been because we're above where we should be for our size of club, size of stage, yeah. and size of attendance, all those sorts of things. What I'd say is, is that if we'd have gone into the season accepting that and promoting that, then people wouldn't have been so annoyed with how poorly we started the season. Instead, we were expecting top half. That's what I say. Yeah, I think, do you know what? I think women and fans are ambitious. I don't think they understand what consolidation means or anything like that. And maybe I'm the same now. I don't I just want to see the club keep moving forward. Um, I don't think the league's been as strong as it was last year. I think there's been some average teams. And I think that's been a frustration that we've seen some average teams come away from Kings Meadow with maximum points or come away with a draw. And you're thinking, if we'd gone for them, I think we could, we could have done I, I know that's exactly what I'm thinking as well. Exactly what I'm thinking. You expect just a bit more heart, a bit more fire, just something a bit better. It's like, guys, look, I know you're giving a five or six out of ten. Notch it up to a seven, mm. you'll probably win the game. Mm. You know, it, that, that's what it is. I know, I know I said that, you know, League One seems difficult this season. I think there are three or four outstanding teams in there who are obviously yeah, going right. up and they're, they're pushing forward. You've got your middle section of underachievers. I think Charlton head that up. And then you've got the perennial, you know, boys who are, who are down the bottom who are just struggling. But I just really think that if Wimbledon could have capitalised like they did in League Two on, during the playoffs, let's be fair. Let's be totally fair. No one expected Wimbledon to get into the playoff final. No, I agree. Yeah? The difference is, is that for every team that was playing a 6 out of 10, Wimbledon were given a 7 or an 8. We're lucky because we had Lyle Taylor. Lucky because Tom Elliott was there. Lucky because Zach and Femmel was there. You had such a good nucleus of a squad that was not... I mean, let's be fair, they weren't spectacular. I remember John, uh, the, the Cambridge, was it 4-1 at Cambridge? Yeah. John Mead scored with a striker's finish. I mean, I'm just sitting there going, what? That's John Mead, mate. What's he doing? And the finish was beautiful. 
Yeah. But the luck rubbed off nicely. Everyone was playing for each other. They weren't, you know, heads weren't in the clouds. Sometimes you, you see a Wimbledon liner. I couldn't pick the, a perfect Wimbledon liner right now because I've got to think to myself, you know what? Whose head is in the game? Whose head is not in the game? Who's going to give you 100%? Who's not going to give you 100%? Is he good enough? Is he good enough? And there's so many tweets about it. Um, I'll tell you what, let's skip through a few of these. Stephen Haywood has asked, who do you guys want to see sign next season? Top three. I think the first one has to be Lyle Taylor, a new contract. Yeah, massively. We were thinking about maybe doing some sort of begging session for Lyle because he's pivotal to what we need. I don't. I don't think Lyle wants to go, if I'm being honest with you. I think there was rumours he could have gone in the summer. He's a big fish, and Lyle's been at big clubs. He's been at Millwalls. He's been at, you know, um, I think that's Sheffield United he's been at. So I think Lyle loves it. I just think he wants to be paid what he's worth, and I think he wants to get it sorted. He's in a good situation where he's out of contract, but I think we have to go all out and sign Lyle. Mm. Um, I mean, we ten- can't do what happened to Tom. No, and that was a thing. You know, at the end of the season, Tom sort of, everyone sort of knew Tom was going, even though he was saying that he didn't want to. But everyone knew the chance come, he would go. Interestingly, we could go if Mill would do well this year. We could go back in for Tom and get him back. Mm. Um, not sure he's going back for your old players, but I think we lost Tom at a, a big time. I think it was a big, big loss for us. But um, there's a few players out there I would like to go. Jake for. Reeves. You have to knock on the door, don't you, Shawnee? You know, Bradford have underperformed this year. They could have a new manager. Um, but I think I think we need to make sure Lyle stays, Dean Parrott, um, Darius Charles, the goalkeeper, if we can if we can tempt George Long to stay. What about Kel? You can tell Kel's what Kel is. Mm. I don't know. I know, I know it sounds really silly, but I thought Kel was the right club at the right time when he came to us. He was he, loved as well, wasn't he? He was. He, I felt bad for James Shea. Yeah, and well, he's very, very slick, wasn't he? You know, Kel, very slick, good-looking boy, wasn't he? A bit, bit gun, you know, a bit of a... Yeah, yeah, you could argue that. I think, I, this might be slightly controversial here, but I actually think, if you compare George Long's season, that George Long has had to the season that James Shea had last season with us, I think James Shea had a better season last season mm-hmm. than George Long has had see, this season. See, the, wor- the worst thing for me is that Sheffield United brought in Jamal Blackman, who was mm. on loan at Wickham. That's right. I don't think he's that good. No. I don't rate him that much. I thought he was quite poor at Wickham. In fact, one keeper, if I was Wimbledon, I'd be looking at is Ryan Allsop, who was at Wickham. He's been at Bournemouth. He's been on loan everywhere, Rocky. He's a great keeper for League One leagues. He's brilliant. I'd say he'd do well in the championships, ch- ch- championship as well. But they brought in Jamal Blackman. I really can see George Long challenging for the number one shirt at Sheffield. Yeah, Jamal. I can't. I think he's out, I think he's out of contract in the summer as well. Older, oh, don't do this. By all, by all accounts, from what I hear, um, on the way line, that George Long loves it at Wimbledon, really look, looks after. Hey, look, if you can't love being around Bezo all the time, then you've got no <laughs> chance in sport, have you? I'll, I'd, I'd be a keeper for Wimbledon for free yeah. if I could work with Bezo. <laughs> I love the guy. You know, he's always in the, you know, George Long's always in the in the bar after the game with the fans and his mum and dad are there. He loves, I think if you put a decent enough deal in front of him, yeah. I think you get him. I, I, really also, do. I also don't think, he's, he's fantastic for us and we'd all love him to have him. I don't think he's necessarily turning many heads outside of us and Sheffield United, to be honest with you. Is that because of where the club is in the, in the league table? Quite probably, yeah. More, more than likely, where we are league position. Um, I can't. He's been steady, consistent. He's steady and consistent throughout the season. I can't think of one game where Who he's been Who else comes in for you, though, from outside? Who are you looking at thinking, yeah, they could do a job? I think you look at target men, don't you? I like, I like Eves at Chillingham. Uh, I think he plays quite well in terms of that sort of side of it. There's a few that always knock around. Kinde from Barnet. Yeah, but I don't know if you get him. He's on quite a long contract, isn't he? he? They look like they're headed wild. Don't even they won this, but they might be going gone, out in the football league. Yeah. You wonder, you wonder if again, though, he got a long contract, didn't he? A decent deal, and he's done nothing this year. I, you wonder, is his heart, is he just maybe with one more season too long at Barnet? Uh, there's a striker at Fly that I like. Uh, he's got 20 goals a season. It's a target man. You've got to get a target man in. Um, you've got Hansen, who's gone to Bury. There's a few around that. We've got to try and maybe put some decent bids in. Mm. If Tom Ennett's available, I think you go back for him like a shot. One player from Luton yesterday scored a cracking goal, who I keep going on about, but Pelly Ruddock at Luton. Oh, like, oh yeah. Cracking yeah, goal yesterday. Fielder, but he doesn't really get many games at all for Luton. It's ridiculous. I don't understand why. I'd have him in our midfield above any of our current midfielders, to be honest with you. But then James Collins as well. We missed out on him in the summer, mm. in the window as well. Went from Crawley, Crawley. didn't he? Um, again, will Luton, will Luton go above their station and go, we now need a better striker? Because, yeah, Luton, Luton love to spend, don't they? And um, they'll be a strong team in this See, I, I was always a fan of Barry Core. Yes. He scored yesterday, Cambridge. didn't he? Yeah, at Cambridge. He was at South End for years. Years and years and years. 
And then he went to Cambridge, and he's kind of he had. I know he's had a couple of injuries. Thirty three, I said, reckon for a season. Barry Cor, he'd be a class act very, very quickly because I know we've got Dave Besant waiting. Um, Adabak and Venwa, new contract at Wickham Wanderers. Looks like they're going up to League One. He signed a new one year deal yesterday ahead of their uh, game mm, uh, okay. against Yeovil. One, it looks like the one was going to be facing him. Two, could he have done a job? Oh, yeah, I love Bayo. I, I was gutted when he left. Absolutely gutted. At this point, he signed a contract now. So that means you have to play against him next season. Mm. Darius Charles against Bayo next year. Mm. That'd well, be a battle. I thought Tyrone Barnett would have done a job for us this season, so Bayo certainly would have done it. So, <laughs> yes, I'd have had this Yeah, it's good for Bayo, though. Another year contract, and he's done well, so, yeah, it'd be a good challenge, good challenge next year. Half past eight on Love Sport Radio. I promise we will read more of your tweets at, at Love Sport Radio. Keep them coming in there at Nine Years Podcast. YRS, right, yeah? Yeah. Nine, nine wires. That's nine right. Wires. Yes. Yes. Nine wires podcast. If you want to have your say this evening, the phone lines are open. Oh two oh eight seventy twenty five five eight. We will be speaking to the Wimbledon legend Dave Bezantnet. Seven OTB dot com. Head over there. Check out your results for this week. Are you any closer to winning one million pounds? If you are, drop us a tweet. I love Sport Radio. Let us know. Let's go to the lines because genuinely, I know you know the the, the use of the word legend is. Well, it's, it's, it's thrown around here, but we are in, you know, in the presence of a genuine legend, a man who spent uh, nine or so seasons at Wimbledon, well over 340, 350 games. Hailing from London, it's the legend that is Dave Bezen. Dave, evening. Good to have you with us. How are you? Hey, yeah, I'm good. Thanks a lot. Good, good, good. Dave, um, first and foremost, Wimbledon, are you, are you keeping tabs with what's going on at, uh, at Kings Meadow this season? Yeah, I get down there when I can, and obviously, you know, when it doesn't, I don't get down there that often because, um, you know, I'm coaching at Reading, mm. so don't get a chance to get down there, but I still keep in touch with, you know, the people who are behind the, the forming of the football club, you know, Ivor Heller, who's, who's been massively into, into getting them back down the plough lane to, to get the new start, the stadium started. Uh, hi, Dave. It's Nick here. Um, you all right? Hi, Nick. <laughs> yeah, good. You sort of keep it down with Kingsmead, obviously. There's been a lot of talk about our manager this season, but you spoke, um, you played under, three, I think, three managers in your time at Wimbledon. You had uh, Dario Grady, Dave Bassett, Bobby Gould. Just be intrigued, when you time at the club, how different were their approaches? Were there notable differences in the way they went about their roles? Were some more training ground managers tactically coaching you on the field, or some they like to take a step back and sort of save it till quarter to three kind of thing? Yeah, it's funny because, you know, at the start of my professional career, you know, Dave Bassett was one who spotted me, but Dario Grady was the, the manager at the time and um, you know, Wimbledon would just get in, you know, just gone from non league into the league and, and Dario had this, this way of wanting to try and play football as, you know, he, he went up to, to crew and, you know, through the academies of the system he had there, he got on playing football. Um, but <clears throat> we found that we were good enough to get out of the, what was the fourth division then and get promoted to the third division but weren't good enough to sustain our place in the league there and then we kept being relegated so Darrow, Darrow's style of football wasn't you know that good to get us up the divisions and Dave Bassett come in and you know it was the way then is, is to get the ball quick and as full as, as possible um, you know less touches get the ball in the box there's more chances school goals so that's the way we started to play and then after a yo-yo couple of years then we started to progress and, and you know the, the story is, is there that you know, people just didn't like playing us and people didn't like the way we played as a team but then again they, they realised the fact that we had some very good players in that team but but there's a stark contrast to like you say Styles and Manager Dave Bassett was very much a, a man manager and, and the players would literally run through brick walls because you know, we weren't on on particularly good contracts at Wimbledon. It was, it's just the fact that, you know, you're given the opportunity to play and, that, and hopefully you use it as a stepping stone. Now, I don't feel that too many people felt that, I, me personally, I, I wanted to play at the top level and I never, ever thought that I would achieve that with Wimbledon Football Cup. I thought I'd have to leave the club to, to achieve my, my goals. But, you know, because of what we were, we managed to go through the divisions, get to the top flight and, you know, two seasons after being in the in the top flight, we we win the FA Cup. Hi, Dave. Stuart here. 
Um, I mean, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious to see. Obviously, now the obviously over the years the style of football has changed. So obviously, Long Ball Wimbledon and and yesterday George Long set up a goal for Lyle Taylor, which um, and obviously when you were at Wimbledon, you were you know, you were Long kicks up front to fashion that. How do you think you would have dealt with today's game, where the keepers now are used as the the, the start in terms of knocking around your feet? How good were you? How good were you on your feet? Well, I mean, this is the funny thing is, you know, this is where we were pioneers at Wimbledon. People don't like to say say that. <laughs> you know, they're very um, against what we've done. But Dave Bassett, he asked me one day in training, and he said to me, because obviously in, in those days it was like either the four steps or you had six seconds to get rid of the ball. Um, and so he said to me, put the ball down and dribble the ball out of the box. And this, this, is, this is, you know, 19... Must be eight, 86, 85, even, mm-hmm. even before that. Dribble the ball out of the box, and I thought he was winding up. <laughs> but, but then he said, no, because now you can get further further out because people don't actually come and shut you down because it was the offside, and he didn't want to close you down because the ball come back, no matter where you were on the pitch, it was offside. And I could get more accuracy off my kicks off the floor, so I was pinging the ball from 15 yards outside my box to Fashi was on the edge of their their 18 yard box, heading the ball across for someone to run in. It was like getting down the wing and across him. So we, you know, as a goalkeeper in those days, it was a, I think it was probably one of the first keepers to to dribble the ball out and and kick it long. But like you say, now it's you're used as as um, like you say a sweeper or an eleventh man. Um, but that everyone's had to adjust and adapt, and I think that's what me as a goalkeeping coach I do with our, our goalkeepers because you have to be, you know, happy with the ball at your feet and receiving the ball with one foot, transferring it to another foot to play the ball long or play the ball out the other side. And, and more often than not, the higher you are, they want you to play the ball so as you, you're going to retain possession of it. Yeah, it sounds like Dave Bassett was very much um, playing to the strengths of the team he had then. Um, and perhaps playing to your strengths of being able to pick out a striker from 50 yards. But how much of um, how, much, how important was Plough Lane in terms of dictating the style we had at that time? And how much did that help us? I, I think that, you know, people will look... The, the playing surface was very good at Plough Lane. The facilities weren't. Mm-hmm. You know, so people didn't like visiting there because they knew the dressing rooms were, you know, square, square box, cold concrete floors... Um, you know, like the empty showers or the, or the bath, and we didn't make it a welcoming place for the opposition to come to. Mm. Um, there was no no you know, luxuries laid on for them. You know, if they wanted a cup of tea, it was one that had been stewed a little bit longer than it should have been. Mm. <laughs> um, you know, the heating was was up in the summer and down in the winter, and, and things like that. So we, we didn't make it a welcoming place. Um, you know, the fans were there. That the, the fans that there were fantastic. There wasn't loads and loads of them. They generated enough noise for, for us. But on the big nights when, you know, when we was progressing and we had, you know, the milk cup runs where we, we had Forest down and then, you know, when we, when we had we progressed to the, the first division and we had the United and Liverpool, they turned up there and they didn't like coming down. You know, they didn't like playing us first and foremost. They didn't like coming down to play alone because, because they wasn't used to it. It, wasn't, it was a non-league ground. In the in the top flight, which you you don't get, you know, you don't get that nowadays. The facilities have to be to a to a level, and you probably will never ever see someone with the facilities of a of a non league club or a league league three club mm-hmm. get into the top flight and, and playing there and, and staying there and being able to hold their own against the Premier League opposition. I mean, I think the the pitch is. You mentioned the pitch and the playing surface there. I think it's sort of a. I think it's almost. Ignored by some people, the fact that actually, as much as you mentioned the welcoming or the lack of warm welcome at Plough Lane, actually the the playing surface and everything it didn't dictate our style of football at all, did it? We we no, dictated our style of football to the strengths of the players, not the playing surface. Which I think sometimes people might look back and get that maybe a little bit wrong or confused. I think. Well, well, Larry Sanchez will always say that when he when we signed him from from Reading. He was known as a ball playing midfielder, mm. and he said when he, he came, you know, Dave Bassett might have said, "You know, stop all that luck, you know, like having three and four or five touches and and trying to go around people. Mm. You get the ball, get out of control, help it into the channel." But this is the thing: is that people, you know, they don't really understand, or they they try to make it out that everything was just a, a hit and hope ball, and we chased after it. It wasn't. We played, you know, we played a 
a weighted pass into an area. And now you, you hear many coaches say, you know, well, you know, we, we've got the ones that play football out the back and, and play 100 passes before they get to the halfway line. But, but then you hear someone say, right, how's the best way to score a goal? Pass it beyond the last line of the opposition. So if you can pass it beyond then to a striker to get in or a winger to get in, you're taking 10 people out of the game. So it's going to be the easiest way to score. Now, it is a pass. It's not just a lump. I was the one who lumped it out, out of my hands. And then we, we fought for the second balls and, and we got that. And then we, you know, the majority, you know, 70 or percent of our goals were coming from crosses from the wide areas. So it was, it was a game plan and we played it. It just wasn't a long ball game. It might have looked that way, but it was, a, it was more culture than just a lump. Love Sport Radio, Sunday evening, approaching quarter to nine as we talk all things AFC Wimbledon. We're joined by club legend, one of the greats who uh, graced the hallowed turf of Plough Lane. It's Mr. Dave Bezant. Dave, very quickly, how pleased were you when you found out the news that, that you know the Dons were going home, they were returning back to Plough Lane? Delighted, you know, because you know, that was the, the beginning of the, the end for, for Wimbledon, the fact that you know, the, the ground was sold, um, the ground sharing occurred, you know, Sellers Park and then the, the move up the road. And, and you can't expect fans from South London to support a team halfway up the M1. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, to, to, for them to get back, and first of all, you know, so what, what's happening down at AFC Women, in fact, that they've got their own, they bought their own stadium there. They're going to be building their own new stadium which again will have the facility to, to be expanded if the you know the progression that the club are hoping for occurs. Um, so it's just a remarkable achievement that the, the lads, you know, everyone involved at the football club has done. And I, and I, I know that you know there was obviously a divide. Some people went up um, to the other place, and uh, and the, the real super dons and the, the real players that uh, I think still support and follow and still go down to AFC Wimbledon have, have stayed true to it and um, and I think that's a, a big thing you know because when you when you look at football and there's many a, a club that they have their, their ex-players come down to the football club they do their, their bits around the lounges and things like that you know I looked at my history and a major part of my history just disappeared mm. um, uh, and it was just taken away to, Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut off there. Sorry. No, go on. I was just going to say a very good question. Um, obviously, you talk about them not up the um, the M1. Um, what was your immediate thoughts when the the three man commission allowed the the women as it was to move all all the way up there? Well, you know, at, at the time when you're I'm away from it, you know, you're really disappointed because obviously yeah, you're, I'm focused on the club that I was at at the time, but. When you think about what they're doing, they're asking first of all players that sign for a football club in in South London to to go up there. You know, it's it's not like you're signing for a, a, club, a club near the Midlands. You're signing for a club that's South West London. You know, it's it's uh, it's just all, all expectations of you know, the, 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 no one looked at the how hard it would hit the club from a fan's perspective. No one cared how it would affect those people that they're expecting them to have to do a, an 80, 90 mile round, uh, or 100, 160 mile round trip to go and watch their team, their home team play. It was all just overlooked. You know, and how someone could come to that conclusion, you know, it just baffles, I think, everyone to, you know, that's got anything to do with, with Wimbledon. Well, I'm sure, you, I'm sure you remember the day very well, but also we're coming up to 30 years since that FA Cup win against that Liverpool side at Wembley. Um, women have got obviously celebrations going on at the club. Can you quite believe it's 30 years? Can you quite believe it's gone on? Do you still get together with the guys at all? Or are you looking forward to the celebrations yeah, later on in the year? I mean, that's the hardest, that's the hardest thing to think that it's, it's 30 years ago. You know, just our time's flowing and, um, you know, We've, we've lost a few people on the way, you know, which is a sad thing. But we've, we've still, you know, we've still got our nucleus, and, and it's amazing that you know Wally, Wally went out to India, and obviously got really bored out there, and uh, and so started texting and WhatsApping everybody, and, and because of that, we set up a WhatsApp group, which was it was from the originals, it was 
from the lads from the the, the third and the fourth divisions that got Wimbledon. And you know what happens in football. You know, you, you, you get to help the club achieve something and then when they go to the next level, maybe you're not classed as good enough to, to go for that next next journey. You know, I, I was fortunate I went through it a lot. There was people that, you know, Paul Fishenden, Andy, Andy Sayer, Kevin Gage, that played for us at the top level and then, then go somewhere else. And when we've got this boss up group and Stevie Atta and Mickey Smith, all those people are on it with Wally. And, and it's just a fantastic... And some of the memories that you find hard to remember, but when someone else just mentions a word, you say, oh, God, I remember. And we had such a good time in in getting to where we, we got. And, it, you know, all the money that players earn nowadays, I wouldn't have changed my journey from, from Division 4 to, to where I got to with Wimbledon, being a major part of it and the players that were at that football club they were unique and um, you know they was all in it for, for one thing they was in it for the football club in it together and in it to, to try and to make a better career for themselves and, and it was unbelievable what, what we achieved with that group of players that stayed together for an awful long time Dave Pezant, you are an absolute gentleman as well as a legend. Thank you so much for joining us this evening on Love Sport Radio. We hope to have you back again soon. What a man, what a gent. That's Dave Pezant. This is Love Sport Radio. This is Love Sport Radio. <laughs> Thank you very much to Dave Pezant, a great guy and uh, an absolute Wimbledon legend for joining us this evening. Uh, thank you to Mark for that question, asking about uh, the three-man commission at Mark at CIFF. Big Dave has tweeted in saying, George Long's kicking has been monstrous the last three games. Most kicks have been landing just outside the opposition's box. All very Wimbledon, especially if there's a target man next season. Yeah, anyone? Else I agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just agree. Yeah. Even to, can you imagine Tom Ennett this year with um, George Long supplying them? Or Bayo, 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 Bayo just holding him and knocking the top corner. Uh, in reply to Ray's tweet, Paul Jeter, Essex Womble, mm-hmm. has said he wants two up front on Saturday for starters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Piggott, I, I think, think so. That's all we've got anyway. They've got two forwards left. Feed the pig. Definitely. Feed the pig. John Hudson at John Bean says, if we finish above MK for the first time ever, this will be one of our best seasons ever by definition, irrespective of the quality of football. And don't forget a big cup tie against Spurs. But please, please, can we stay up? We, yeah. we will stay up. And uh, yes, it would be a most amazing thing if we stay up and finish above them and they go down. It would be brilliant. The whole football world loves us. But we cannot measure our success against theirs, if you know no, what I mean. We can't measure ourselves against them. We have to do it on our own back. I don't know if I read this one out. If I did, I did. I did. If I didn't, I did. Mike Hasty has tweeted and said, a season where we stay up, they go down, we get a trip to Wembley and MPL gets confirmed. Sounds like a good season to me. It does. And like I say, you know, there is a big, that's we found, you know, we want to make sure they go down. Um, but hey, it'll be good for them next year. League 2 will be a great, great ground for you know, loads of away fans and um, yeah. they'll be enjoyable for them next oh, year. Oh, there's it? empty seats. Uh, Chris Hardy <laughs> has tweeted in saying, we've been through adversity before. Remember we tried to survive in the Football League with Matt, Matt Mitchell King. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart's face there. Uh, <laughs> Stu loves Just Matt sheer King. disappointment on his face. Jamie Stewart as well. I love Jamie Stewart. But you, you sometimes have to pinch yourself. The journey, you know, the defenders we have now, but... Yeah, Matt Mitchell King, no, no disrespect to him, but um, yeah. Hey, look, Warren Cummings, Matt Mitchell King, Jamie Stewart <laughs> and uh, Curtis Asano were our back four. Uh, yeah, that was the worst hand ever dealt a manager when Neil Lally first joined the club, I think. Yeah. Warren Cummings, how old was he when he turned up? 84. About Just two years younger than we were, we were told he was like the experienced left back and um, yeah. He was he experienced. He just didn't. He looked like, do you, do you remember when Terry Burton was first brought in and there's that picture of him being carried by a couple of players and he just <laughs> looks like, he looks like <laughs> someone who should have been in, you know what, you, you know what those things in hospital where they pick you, hoists. <laughs> he looks so like skinny and just like, he looked like a bag of bones. You know, um, 15 years of one ball said, at last already, why do you only have the show for an hour? So much drama that revolves around AFC Wimbledon every one hour doesn't suffice. Hashtag better than EastEnders. 15 years of one ball, I love you very much. And you know what? I'm going to be putting it to the bosses tomorrow morning. <laughs> Elsewhere. Another tweet. Mrs. MC, at Love Sport Radio, who's been your player of the season? Hashtag Womble stand up. Do you know what? That's a great question. Do you want yeah. it first? Oh, hold on. Oh, okay. Wait. Okay. Wait. Whoa. Let's put a pin in. Question. Do we debate it now or do we hold it till next week, put out a couple of polls and bring it all together next week? Sounds good because I'll be interested to see. Um, Mrs. MC, we're going to put 
a pin in that because yeah. we want to talk about that next. I like that very good. Uh, Said has asked, who do you think is leaving the club in summer and who would you like to see come in? Who's leaving? <laughs> yeah, Joe, I think I wouldn't be surprised to see Cody leave this year. Um, really? Yeah, I, I just don't know whether... I don't think I don't know whether Cody actually agrees that what he was signed in the summer is actually what he got. Um, so I think there'll be some assurances here, one. Um, I wonder whether we do go with Barry Fuller going this year. Um, I think... I, I'm, um, yeah. I think we need a new right. I think we need a new right back. We've got one coming through the, the, the ranks in terms of Toby Civic. Mm. But I would like... Joe, I'd like to get an attacking fullback. It's one of the things we haven't done is we don't really have attacking fullbacks. So Barry gets the forward. overlapper. Yeah, don't go. Barry gets forward, but he ain't gonna score a goal. He's not gonna put. You know, he's he works hard, and Barry's a great player for us, and would always be remembered as a legend. But I would like to get some attacking fullbacks in, and a nasty person in midfield puts his foot in, doesn't mind getting a book in, but really leaves that midfield. Yeah, I think there's a good word to use on TV today. Passive. I think that sums up our midfield this season, actually, for loads bowls of it. Passive midfield, and we do need that someone who's going to get in, fly into tackles and put themselves about around the pitch and everything like that. In terms of players leaving and what have you, a bit of a spoiler here. Callum Kennedy will leave in May, and he will sign a contract with us in July. <laughs> Return for like the third time or fourth time, Eight isn't it? Yeah, that is, what is that? How many times is that? that? <laughs> he just loves it so much as well. Yeah, we, f- we feed him and he just keeps coming back. It's amazing. Yeah, we can't really... No, but I love Callum, actually. And he's been unfortunate this season. It just hasn't... John Meese has come back in. And to be honest with you, actually, John Meese got a bit of grief when he first came back in, but no one's really complaining too much about it. Hey, lads, Bully's still doing it at Crawley. I was there Tuesday night as well. Fancy the boys. It, you know. Mm. Yeah, mm. Bit, bit of if you're show. older than Stu, I think he's probably too old to be playing football. Joe, yeah. was good on Tuesday night. We had the old boys back. So we had James Shade back mm. on Tuesday. Um, Danny Borman, yeah. Dave Anderson. Really nice. Yeah, spotted Dave. Really nice that when um, yeah. when they haven't got a game, they come back. I think that says a lot about a club. Good atmosphere, good vibes. Right, we've got one minute twenty for any other business. Um, well, I suppose we have to very touch on this eight percent thing because people are going to expect to talk about it. We're going to run out of time to talk about it, but maybe next week we'll mention it. But no, I'm not happy. I'm not happy at all with this <laughs> you ridiculous your rad, your anger. You? Come on. season ticket thing where apparently you've got to attend or notify your non-attendance for 8% of games for you to be able to renew your season ticket the following season. I don't understand. It's almost like the club is saying, we don't want you, we don't need your money for season ticket holders. If you pay your money, they're quite willing to take that away from you, which I think is insane, to be honest with you. And just say, if you want to voice your opinion and have a say, we've got an open meeting on the 19th, Thursday and 19th, mm. which should be fun. And in terms of, we were talking about budgets during one of the break. Apparently, it's come out this week that the budgets are going to be a little bit, you know, more sort of lenient. Neil's going to have a bit more cash to play with, isn't he, in the summer? <laughs> Is that because Liam Trotter's wages off the wage bill? <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Liam Trotter to stay. I want him to stay. Mm, we'll see. Well, there you go. Thank you. Wombles and Wombolettes, you are all legends. Thanks to Dave Besant as well. Thanks to Stuart and to Nick. We're back next Sunday from 8 pm. Don't forget, you can keep the conversation going at Love Sport Radio on Twitter. It's been brilliant, it's been emotional.